Good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you for inviting me here to speak about open innovation and the 21st uh, century science. Uh, well, Houghton has already introduced the big innovation center, so I'm not going to do this. I'm going to uh, mention that what I will speak about here is what uh, experiences businesses have when they work with universities, how do they experience uh, uh, this process of knowledge sharing, and also are universities really ready for open innovation as they look today. And uh, it is uh, work which we have been doing with the Intellectual Property Office. Uh, the research is not finished, it's ongoing. I will represent the present results here for the first 137 companies that have responded, but we are still getting responses in, so really bear in mind that these are really preliminary results, but I think they still uh, explain a, a very good trend. And uh, I wish that the experiences were as positive as uh, what has been in the, from the previous uh, presentation uh, of really getting to grip with what open innovation is about. Uh, because uh, what I think I should start with here is to introduce the difference between a knowledge transfer and open innovation, because we know that all universities have knowledge transfer offices or TTOs or business relations units, etc. So how does that differ? Are they up for, knowledge, uh, for open innovation? Actually, knowledge transfer is about transferring knowledge from one place to another or transfer technology from one place to another. And in a university's context, it has been about science and technology push. We're pushing our knowledge out uh, for commercialization purposes. So, far, so this is kind of closing the gap from concept to market. But open innovation is different. This is about challenge-lit innovation as solving the problem with Alzheimer's, as solving the problems of greens growth, uh, as solving the problems of health care, health delivery services, or as solving problems related to big data. It's basically about how companies uh, or, or universities share their, uh, their data, their people, their talent, their knowledge, their resources, everything around one common challenge which they try to solve the problem to from wherever they are or from whatever discipline they have. Uh, so uh, in the big innovation centre, we are 12 companies, uh, we are, are four uh, public bodies, we are one uh, trust, uh, one research council, and we are a collection, a consortium, eight universities led by uh, the University of Oxford. Uh, so this is uh, how we come into them. We, we are looking at green growth, health and big data. Uh, so now I will just so on what what I will now present I'll present three things or three findings for our research right now. Uh, first, I will say present that universities are very good at knowledge transfer that works really well. They are not uh, that good uh, at open innovation. They need to do more to be much better at this. And how do they do that? They must empower academics. Uh, uh, they must also move from a uh, knowledge transfer. Uh, and integrate that into open innovation and be our open, uh, um, open access and open science movement must also communicate with the open innovation agenda to actually form a purpose of solving some of these challenges which uh, we have enough of in the world right now. Okay, so uh, I'll not present the data uh, really except for just to mention that they are based upon a, a, a lot of uh, uh, companies and uh, the report will be forthcoming and it will be launched at uh, the Triple Helix International Conference in July. So what you see here is preliminary results of uh, a variety of uh, uh, sectors uh, by, you know, uh, for, of companies uh, of different sizes. So. Okay, so how does companies uh, really experience when they, they, they are, uh, um, how they work uh, with universities? What is actually uh, the initial uh, contact they have with the university? How does the whole thing begin? And actually, we see that for most companies that answered, that they start with a, a, a contact to an academic, uh, them contacted them, or the academic contact the company, or a conference, or the alumni, or an, or an industry replacement. 
So really, it starts with people, and rather than the big institutions like the technology transfer offices uh, or spin-outs, etc., we speak a lot about them, but when it comes to initiating all this, and I think that is because of really the companies will come to later, they are looking for a, a, a certain uh, open innovation challenges. They have real problems they need to solve, and they need to use the, 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 the knowledge and the talent and the people and the skills for this purpose. So really, we must empower academics. We must reduce all the institutional bureaucracies. Uh, we must all, uh, and, and empower academics. We must create more opportunities for industry replacements. We must manage very successfully our alumni, uh, and we must also understand the purposes of our conferences. And today, I think it's a very good uh, a way in which we can all be introduced also to new people and new ways, new contexts. Which I'm sure uh, uh, we, we, we will keep and. And this is the case for most conferences where they become proper interdisciplinary. Also, uh, uh, how do companies engage with universities and what works well? Well, here I'm happy to say that basically in all different areas of which we can think of engaging with companies, uh, we have seen very good results that companies responded works very well. Uh, so, uh, and we can also see where it, work, but where it works best is where, where the engagement is related to higher education and training, supervision of students and student placements, etc. Uh, and of course, uh, that shows still that the university's very traditional role in which they often engage with uh, companies or, 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 or in which companies maybe perceive the way in which they should engage with universities. But what are the incentives? Why do companies come to universities? What do they want? And, uh, and what works very well? Uh, well, we see that what works, works very well is the traditional forms of knowledge transfer that the company go to the universities to get access to new basic knowledge, to get access to the talent for help in the academics, or do some kind of formal collaborative agreement. But what works less well is all the areas of open innovation, interactive learning, co-creation, cool the development of products or processes or solving real life problems, the challenge. Uh, uh, and also, of course, also uh, uh, universities. Therefore, when it also seems to work less well when it comes to uh, companies working with them in order to uh, gain a more strategic uh, positions in markets in which universities have helped them to uh, 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 shape these kind of disruptive uh, and, and novel uh, new products and processes. So. Basically, also, uh, we see here uh, that a majority of firms, when they are, are working with uh, universities, they have not really used any forms of IP, whether it is a formal IP or informal IP. So sometimes we're overrating this whole uh, idea of uh, how important uh, IP is, because many companies uh, think that it is very, very good to work, uh, to work much more openly with academics within universities. However, uh, when an, an IP is used where it serves a purpose, uh, the answer showed, which I'm not sure, uh, showing the data here, but for those who use each type of IP, whether it's formal or informal, there's about 50-50 percent of companies who say it works well or it does not work very well or work very well. So there is a huge divide of the experiences of the effectiveness of IP. Uh, but except for two places, non-disclosure agreements work very well as memorandums of understanding, so the more the softer version of formal IP, and also the uh, commitment and loyalty and the kind of trust between academics and companies work really well. Uh, with respect to copyright, of course, we are, um, we are very uh, supportive uh, of the uh, copyright uh, uh, frameworks, which are changing towards more, towards having exceptions and limitations to copyrights. We think that's very important, and of course, it's important in the big data and open access movement. Um, so, let me see here. Uh, so basically, uh, we have uh, uh, this. So basically, also, when it comes to open science, how can we move, how can we ensure that our open science, our open access, 
actually can uh, result or can, can help open innovation. We have discussed a lot open access and big data, etc. this morning, and we are speaking a lot about uh, releasing data, rele releasing public access to publications, releasing our knowledge, etc. and the regia in this, but we need to ensure that we are releasing it for a purpose, not only for our own ref or for our own ranking, etc., but we are releasing them because we believe that generally can become a part of wealth creation in our society that we're doing it for some kind of purpose that should be related to the, or they are related to the government's growth agenda. We should not forget that, and you'll have the village here uh, in, in a short while. Uh, so when we put our, our when Hefke had the pre-consultation on, uh, on how the open access consultation should look like, Pro 2014 REF. This is what we submitted from the Big Innovation Center that we need that open access, that the implementation of this open access ideas or uh, uh, new ways must involve the development of better skills and awareness of academics in understanding the open access. We, but also we need to empower academic communities to open, understand open access licenses, the role of copyrights or, or, the, or, or, or copyright limitations in scholarly communication. And also academics must have a, a, an understanding, a better understanding of the wider benefit of their research and how that now can be used for co-creation in open up innovation in order to solve real life growth challenges that can create growth, jobs and welfare and a better quality of life. This is why we're all here at the end of the day, although in the division of labor, we are doing more blue sky thinking that can still form part of bringing it to market in a complete different format with open access. We shall not forget that. And I think it's very important that all academics uh, think about these things, uh, how the research should be used. Uh, also, we need coordinating mechanisms and infrastructures. We've spoken a lot about this at the conference, the technical challenges associated with this. But also, I uh, suggest experimentation with new platforms and business models as evidence of what works. We have seen many different types of platforms in which uh, knowledge can be shared, and I have seen much more uh, prior to this conference here, and we're going to have much new, more other new ideas coming after this conference here. And I think that the experimentation is very important before we kind of close down and decide what way we should uh, uh, take, uh, science uh, should take with respect to open access. And of course, intellectual property regulation must be fit for purpose. And of course, this is very important with the new disruptive uh, technologies coming from uh, uh, big data, 3D printing, etc. So uh, I want to show that the last slide before my, my summary is also how actually some experiences has been uh, in terms of uh, practices when working with, when businesses are working with universities. And we can see what works very less well is actually in institutions that link academics and companies because quite often the link is institutional rather than uh, uh, academic. And of course, we need some kind of platforms where these could be better linked. And also corporate practices and, and practices of business models of universities are very different and sometimes very conflicting because they have different uh, performance indicators and different uh, incentives. Of, uh, so therefore, of course, it's important that, that we are merging them much better or make them more compatible. And uh, but works really well, of course, is when we have strong program structures with clear milestones and clear challenges. And this is exactly what you get from open innovation. And you don't get just from pushing out knowledge and then it more random uh, 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 where it would go. So to be uh, um, su uh, successful, uh, or to make success in academic business collaborations from the business perspective, which we have researched here, uh, we see that we must empower individual academics to engage with businesses, and, we, and that we must engage in multiple types of relationships, and that we must develop capabilities to integrate knowledge transfer with this open innovation vi vision. And I would actually personally go, we should actually shift entirely. We should have open innovation uh, movements uh, and institutions within universities. Also recognize the traditional IP tools uh, uh, may not be key. Sometimes they are key, uh, but they are in, uh, uh, but, but but they're not kind of a, a one way. And non-disclosure arrangements and and, and and loyalty and trust is quite often a better way, and that pays off in a better way in terms of the experiences for companies. 
the open access movement must be integrated with the talent-led innovation movement, and we must be open to more new best practice collaborations, doing things in new ways. The university should not only do science and research, but they should also be innovative in the way in which to do it. And they should also think of maybe we also now are in a, entering a new kind of scientific paradigm, but it's not only about the open access journals, but it's a whole new way in which we do science and the way science can actually help to, to foster growth and welfare and development. Thank you.